Good morning, Charisma Christian Center. Thank you. So good to be back home. Welcome back, Pastor James. How many of you prayed for me and my wife when we were gone for three weeks? How many of you did not pray for us? Let me pray for you. Father, forgive them. Just kidding. Well, it's so good to be back home. I've been gone for three weeks, so I would like to greet Happy Father's Day to all the dads. And I would like to greet Happy Birthday, America. And I'd like to greet Happy New Year, Charisma. We just turned 24 years old. Everybody say Happy New Year, Charisma. Amen. I just want to thank God, our leaders. You know, somebody once said, the success of a leaders. It's not based when you're present. The success of your leadership is when you're absent. And for the three weeks that I was absent, the church is rocking. Come on, somebody. The church is growing. Come on, somebody. And because of leaders. So I want to thank God for Pastor Chris Chan, for Pastor Bill, for Pastor Ariel, for Pastor Warren, for Pastor Richard, for Sister Faye leading our backpack giveaway. Can we give those people a big hand? Come on, somebody. We thank God for leaders who are faithful. Amen. Everybody say, God is the God of all season. At the count of three, I want to shout. The first service is very enthusiastic and powerful. I think you have enough rest. At the count of three, shout, the God of all season. The God of all season. You know, when I was uh, away for three weeks, we had the rest and ministry at the same time. I have a time to rest. And I learned this from Pastor Chris, a very wonderful insight. How many days God created the world? Come on, talk back to me. Everybody say six days. On the seventh day, God rested, right? Why, why do you think God rested? Do you think God is tired? Do you think God ever get tired? No, He never get tired. But why did He rest on the seventh day? The rest there is not rest from tiredness, but to reflect on what He did on the six days. So like today, you work for six days. Today is your seventh day. Amen, somebody? Today, you are here to reflect on the goodness of the Lord. Probably it's been a top week, but praise God, you're here and ready to worship Jesus. Let's give Jesus a clap of praise today. Amen? So there's this book in the Bible. It's not too popular. The name of the book is Numbers. It's kind of boring, Numbers. But in chapter 33 of the book of Numbers, God commanded Moses to write the story of Israel's journey of 40 years just to reflect on what God did. Why do we have anniversary? To reflect on our wedding. Why do we have 4th of July? To reflect on the goodness of America. Why do we have Awareness Day? To reflect. I want us to take a journey with me and reflect of 24 years of God's favor to our church. Amen. Would you stand up on your feet today and let's gonna read the scripture at the count of three. I want us to read this aloud. One, two, three. Here are the stages in the journey of the Israelites when they came out of Egypt by division under the leadership of Moses and Aaron. At the Lord's command, Moses recorded the stages in their journey. This is their journey by state. Rain standing. I want to ask you a question. Which word repeated a couple of times or even three times in that verse? What? Journey. What else? Everybody say stages. Everybody say journey. Everybody say stages. Everybody say journey. When the word is repeated in the Bible, Listen carefully. It's like your mom saying, hey, listen to me. Hey, listen to me. Hey, listen to me. What you're going to say is very important. How many of you know that life is a journey? Talk back to me. 
In every stage of this life called journey, there's different stages. For me, my wife and I are in the stage of empty nester. My daughters are getting out or probably getting married, uh, the, uh, hopefully not soon. <laughs> or maybe some of you are in the st stage of retirement. Maybe some of you are in the stage of getting married. Like I know some people just got engaged and next month I'm going to perform two weddings. Maybe some of you are in the stage of single again because of divorce. Those things happen. Or maybe some of you are in the stage of bereavement like my dear sister Evelyn and Josh losing their dad. So all of us are in different stages, but let me tell you this, in whatever stage you are in, everybody say, God is with you. Tell the person next to you, God is with you. So I want to take you on a journey today, Charisma. You cannot be seated. Maybe some of you are saying, Pastor, why do we need to study that history of Israel 40 years? We're not Israelites, we're Filipinos, or we're Asian. What's the point of that? There's a point. Did you know that the Bible is one book? Old and new. The old is connected to the new, and the new is connected to the old. You cannot divide the Bible without all the new. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a narrative, it's a story of God. In fact, Apostle Paul says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I want you to read this with me, Charisma. All these things happen to them as what? Everybody say examples. Everybody say object lesson. Say the Charisma. Example. Those of you are watching online, type it in. Example. Everybody say object lesson. God is saying to us, the history of the Old Testament are written as example and object lesson for us to warn us to don't do their, what they did. Don't copy their mistake. And also, they are written down so we could learn. Everybody say learn from them. So we're going to take you on a stage right now, different stages of journey of life. And I want you to the Holy Spirit to open your mind and your heart and allow the Holy Spirit to bless you because it has blessed my life while I was preparing this. And ask, what stage are you in right now in your journey with God? The first stage that God took them, remember when God saved you. Everybody read this together. Remember when God said, can I ask you, do you remember your physical birthday? Of course, we should. Do you remember your spiritual birthday? Do you remember that day when you become a born-again believer? The day when God saved you? How many of you know this, that there is this heavy burden called sin? Because we are so guilty of sin, we cannot get rid of this. We tried good works and good works is not enough. We carry that heavy burden called sin. Then one day you heard a gospel story that Jesus came to carry that burden of sin and He nailed it at the cross and He took your pain and He took your punishment and you accepted Jesus and joy and peace came into your life. Could somebody say amen? It's just like in the words of Whoopi Goldberg from Sister Act. Oh, happy days when Jesus washed my sin away. I hope you don't forget that day when you met Jesus. It might be through that water baptism, that moment poured the Israelites. That moment happened one night in Egypt. Let's read this together. The Israelites set out from Ramses. Ever say Ramses. That is the capital of Egypt back in the day. On the 15th day of the first month, the day after, everybody say Passover. At the count of three, one, two, shout Passover. One, two, three. Passover. That's very important. Take note of that. They marched out defiantly in full view of the Egyptians. Wow. They marched out like with swagger and living out Egypt. Imagine they're slaves in Egypt. Then one day, God saved them to the Passover, and now they march out of Egypt defiantly. We're no longer slaves. We're free. And the Bible says here, during that night, verse 4, who were burying all their firstborn, whom the Lord had struck down among them, for the Lord has brought judgment on their gods. Explain this. What is this history? So, God sent a deliverer, his name is Moses, 
And his words to Pharaoh is, let my people go. And Pharaoh says, no. And God says, uh-oh. God sent nine punishments called plagues. Punish them. Plagues, 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 virus, plagues, plagues, plagues. And the people in Egypt don't want to give in. On the 10th plague, finally, Pharaoh surrendered to God. Because on that day, all of the firstborn humans and firstborn animals in the land died when the dead angel came. But in the household of the Israelites, there was a Passover. Everybody say Passover. And this is the requirement of God. You kill a lamb without blemish and put the, the, the blood on the doorpost. I want you to look, look at this next slide. And when the angels see the blood, the Bible says it will pass over. Do you imagine that night? People are wailing and crying. Imagine your firstborn, your first, your firstborn boy or girl died, and then your pets. And because of the death angel, but to the household of Israelites, they're having communion, and they were saved. That's why until today in Israel, that is the highest, one of the highest holidays when they celebrate Passover. I want you to look at this next slide and I want you to see this. Would you help me out? Just a prophetic gesture. This is how they do it. At the count of three, follow my hand. Hey, come on, raise your hand, right hand. All of us, all of us. Okay, up, right, side. One, two, three. Do it again. Come on, do it again. What is that? It's a symbol of the cross. That one day a lamb, the perfect lamb, will be sacrificed at the cross. That's for us. And that our sins will be, will be forgiven by God. I want you to hear this charisma. The angel did not check, or the Lord did not check who inside the house was worthy. He checked for the blood on the doorpost. Everybody, I want you to know, no one is worthy of the blood of Jesus. Amen, somebody? It's only because of His grace. Amen, somebody? Can we give a clap of praise to Jesus about that? Amen? The angel did not check, is that person good behavior? Is that person a good husband? The only thing angel said is, is there a blood on the doorposts of those households? That's why I challenge you. Everything, every time you go out of your house, this is my wife and I, this is what we do. Every time we go out, we pray, and we plead the blood of Jesus. Protect me, Lord, as I drive. Protect my family. I always do that. Plead the blood of Jesus. I don't know about you. The blood of Jesus is the best protection from any virus called sin. Come on, somebody. Amen. 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 You want to give a clap of Jesus? Give it to him. I believe that. The Bible is Christ Jesus was our Passover lamb. In fact, when John the Baptist saw Jesus passing by, this is what Jesus shouted, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Do you remember the day when Jesus saved you? Don't take that lightly. We're on the way to hell, guilty of sin. And then Jesus took our sins and nailed the cross, and now He put your name in in the Lamb's Book of Life. Remember when God saved you. That is the Passover. Number two. Everybody say, say this with me. Remember when God delivered you. One, two, three. Remember when God delivered you. So after they cross over or pass over, they're now on a journey to the promised land. This is the first obstacle that they experienced. Let's look at this. They left Pai Hahirot, and everybody say, pass through. At the count of three, shout, pass through. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. You know why that is very important? The Bible never say, and they left Pai Hariroth, and they walked around the mountain. Or they took a boat. The Bible says they passed through. 
And here's the thing I want you to understand. In your walk with Jesus, sometimes God will not take away the problem, but in the middle of your problem, God will go with you and will solve the problem. Come on, somebody. In the middle of your life with Jesus, somebody got cancer, but during that passing through of the cancer, we hear Sister Elizabeth healed miraculously from cancer. Come on, somebody. We saw Brother Terrace healed miraculously from cancer. God did not prevent them from cancer, but they went through cancer and they came out victorious and healthy come on church in our life there are moments when God will not solve the problem but he will go with you through the problem and then you notice that problem can become a blessing for you amen don't forget that has God delivered you from something come on somebody you know for me honest confession God delivered me from drugs I was a drug addicts for for years in fact my family gave up on me especially my relatives and my auntie they already had an intervention meeting telling that james is hopeless he's a walking medicine closet that's what i heard he cannot change anymore let's just send him to re rehab and let him just stay there but my dad stood for me and said no I'm going to believe God that Jesus will heal my son from addiction. And he did. Come on, somebody. He delivered me from drugs. Let me tell you a story, church. The reason why I know that this is an act of God, I was delivered from drugs and no withdrawal. No withdrawal. Some people have trying to get out of addiction. The problem is withdrawal, the relapse. You know, probably God is saying, this boy is beyond uh, help. I cannot... Uh, if we don't help this boy, he cannot be set free. <laughs> and he took away any cravings, no, no, no relapse, no, no, no withdrawal. I cannot forget that. How about you, church? Do you have a story that you know that you know God delivered you? Amen, somebody? Now, what do you do with that? You need to tell that story so that people will be encouraged. And don't be shy. I was not shy about saying that I was a drug addict. Because I know I'm a product of my past, but no longer a prisoner of my past because of Jesus. Amen. I'm telling the story so that people, if you're going through something, whatever it is you think that's binding you, there is Jesus Christ. Just speak the name of Jesus and there's healing and there is deliverance from that. Come on, somebody. Amen. In fact, this is what the Bible says. Psalm chapter 202 verse 18. Let this be what? Written for what? Future generation. So the people not yet created praise the lord everybody say the power of testimony do you have a testimony how god saved you how god blessed you how god healed you how god delivered you come on somebody come on somebody come on if that is true come on let's give it up for jesus church don't be stingy about that. Let's give all the glory to God. Come on, somebody. You could have been dead by now. I could have been dead by now. But God spare our life. Amen. And know why you need to tell that story? Here's, there's power in the words. When you say what the Lord has done, you are releasing the same anointing of your past miracles and into your present situation. As you say so, your past breakthroughs will become a present-day reality today. Can I ask you today, how many of you have lost a job and God provided you with a better job? Come on, come on. Keep telling that story. Keep telling that story. Because you are telling God, Lord, what you did before, do it again. Do you know the word testimony in Hebrew is I do-ot? Means do it again. So when you're testifying about how God provided, how God healed you, how God saved you, you're saying to God, God, I'm ready for a new testimony. Do it again. At the count of three, say, do it again. Do it again. Remember when God delivered you. In Revelation chapter 12, 11, it says here, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Number three. Remember, when God removed your bitterness, everybody say bitterness. Honest confession, how many of you will be 
honest, we are in the church, don't lie. Every now and then you get bitter. You get jealous. Raise your hand. And envious of other people. Amen. Those of you are not and we forgive you for lying. You know, the third stage that they went through, they had to deal with bitterness. Look at this. After Passover, after uh, pass through, now they encounter three days in the desert. We've been to Israel. It's desert. That's why if you see an oasis, uh, wow, that's springs of water, very rare. That's not Washington that it rains nine months in a year. Water is a high commodity, very valuable in Israel. Imagine you're three days in the desert and you went to Mara. Ever say Mara. By the way, when, when you name a, a, a name of a person, don't name your baby Mara, okay? That means bitter. So what happened in Mara? Let's read this in Exodus. When they came to Mara, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. That is why the place is called Mara. So the people grumbled against Moses saying, what are we to drink? Then Moses cried out to the Lord and the Lord showed him a piece of wood and he threw it into the water. Everybody say, the water turned sweet. Wow. I think it's only God could do that. Most of the time, humans, we turn sweet into bitter. That's why marriage can turn up into a bitter divorce. Right? Sex is good. We could per pervert it and become it adultery, promiscuity. Human, we, 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 we are good in doing something that is sweet and turn it to a bitter experience. But how many of you know God specializes in doing something that is so wonderful? Your bitter experience in life, He could turn it to a sweet experience. Amen. Everybody say, bitter made sweet. The good thing I see here about Jesus, he did not say, uh, uh, people of Israel, uh, get a pail of water, take out the, the dirty water, throw it out, go to Jordan River, go fresh water, and put it here in Mara. Jesus said, no. Moses, you see a wood? Throw it in the dirty water. And the water turned into sweet water. That's what you call transformation. But I want you to see an experience that they had to go through, going through bitterness. You know what is bitterness, church? Bitterness is a toxic emotion that can lead people to have pent-up anger and that can destroy their relationship with other people. Do you like hanging out with people who are bitter? No. You try to shy away from them because it's toxic, right? They always see negative. They always see something bad. It's a toxic emotion. It's dangerous. We need to get rid of that. That's why God told them in Deuteronomy, I'm telling you, this is serious. This is what God's saying. Make sure there is no man or woman, clan, or tribe among you today whose heart turned away from our Lord and go to worship the gods of the nations and make sure there is no root among you that produces bitter poison. Everybody say root. Everybody say fruit. If you have a bad root, you will have a bad fruit. That's why bitterness is like a root. It goes deeper. Sometimes it's, you could pretend it's okay, but every now and then it pops up. And it's like a poison. Uh, the, the Bible says, get rid of it. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Everybody say, instead, be kind. Everybody say, be kind. Everybody say, tender-hearted. Everybody say, forgiving. So, the reason why I was set free from drugs, the just say no slogan did not work for me. I tried that so many times. You know why I was saved, delivered from drugs? Because I said yes to Jesus. Did you get that? Come on, charisma. You can, because the more you say, you say, no, you can, you'll do it again. You do it again because you're, you're powerless. But you say, Jesus, I said yes to you. I'm, I'm, I'm weak. You be my strength. And then you could say no to the temptation. Amen, somebody. So you, instead of that, is you replace your bitterness with being kind, tenderhearted. Now, let me just touch a little bit subject here. How does bitterness develop? 
Let's read this together, Charisma. How does bitterness develop? Uh, bitterness can easily develop in our lives when we believe before that. When we believe we have been slighted and overlooked or mistreated. Filipinos, we have this saying, Sana all. Right? You know, when I was a pastor in the Philippines, we're going on a beach party in Baloy, uh, water baptism. We're already riding on a jeepney. And then I forgot to invite one elderly member, the nanay. So, oh, invite nanay, let's go to the beach. And then the nanay said, the elderly lady said, no, I'm not going to with you guys to the beach because I already prayed for storm and rain. <laughs> he was so bitter because she was, in, she was not invited. Now she's praying for rain. Because she's not invited. Now, I just challenge you, Charisma. All of us are guilty of this. Sometimes when you see someone living in a nice house, instead of rejoicing with them, I wonder how much mortgage they're paying for that. Do you think they're still eating out? You're not the one paying. Why don't you rejoice with them? Come on, somebody. When you see someone drive, uh, riding a nice car, how oh, much a month monthly? Oh, the cost is so expensive. You know how you conquer that bitterness? When you see your friend riding a nice car, you rejoice. Said, can I, can I go inside? Oh my gosh, I smell the leather. Oh, so good. I'm happy for you. Because what you're doing, you're killing that bitter spirit in you. Come on, somebody. When you see your neighbor being blessed, get ready and celebrate because God is moving in the neighborhood. And your next, amen, somebody, you need to conquer that. When you and your friends are in the same diet program, the same diet plan, the same diet meal, and you are following it to the T, and after a month, your friend lost five pounds and you gained five pounds, celebrate. Pray for that friend. Lord, let her keep losing weight until she becomes malnourished. <laughs> what I'm trying to say, church, bitterness. Even pastors could be bitter with other pastors. People bitter with other business people. I want you to learn. This is a spirit that we need to conquer that. So, let me tell you, uh, in my travel, it's only because of God's grace I was able to see places like this. I'm telling you, that's why it's always good to say yes to Jesus. There's this place in Croatia called Dobrynik. Uh, became famous because of Game of Thrones. That's where they shot the Game of Thrones. I'm not a fan of Game of Thrones, so I'm not too excited about that, but it's a nice place to visit. You know, inside that city, Dobrynik, there are 50,000 residents. It's a fortress. The taxi driver told us, you know, last year, five million people went inside that fortress because of the Game of Thrones. So, inside that, uh, this is the reason why we have favor from Convoy of Hope. Everything is because of relationship. Ten years ago, I met this guy, a Convoy of Hope ambassador. Look at Sharon. She looks like a, my girl. She looks like my, my, my daughter right there, right? <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> So that is Rick Sureke, a Jewish brother. He will be coming here, speaking here. I don't want you to miss him. He used to be an atheist, Jewish, that become a believer. So that's connected us to Convey of Hope. That's why we're receiving those blessings and favor of truckload of groceries. So I said, hey, James, let's go to Drobnik. It's our fourth day. And she, he even paid for our tour. We went inside. This is like entering the, the King, famous King's Landing. And now you're gonna walk all around the, the fortress and nice view of the city. And I had a good picture there. Then this is what I learned. The number one attraction is the Game of Thrones. But the number 10 attraction is kind of weird. Museum, kind of silly. But one million people visited this museum. Let me start it off by saying this. Better have or bitter half. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Amen? Sometimes our better half can become a bitter half. Amen? 
You, you hear that from people. Get people married for a long time when they talk about their husband, when they talk about their wife. Come on, somebody. Amen. Better half or bitter half. So there is this couple married for four years, end up in divorce. So there's no, they're thinking, who's going to keep the couch? Who's going to keep this? Who's going to keep the TV? So what they did, why don't we rent a, a, a place and turn it to a museum? Let's put all the stuff that we had in our four years of uh, together, being together, and let's turn it to a museum and let, write letters what that item represents. It's called the Museum of Broken Relationship. That's in Croatia. You see, like, uh, there's a dress there. And then you know what? They open it for public. I'm telling you, thousands of objects all over the world sent to Croatia, donated, so that they could just be put in the museum. Look at this. It's like a broken heart, right? And different items. One million people one year went there. And check this out. Here's one item there. It came from, a, from Sweden. A hundred Swedish crowns, that is their currency. This small bill is the only thing left after relationship and a trip to Stockholm. He told me, keep it. You're going to use it the next time you come see me. Because there was no next time. That's the only memorabilia left in that relationship. This came from Arcadia, California. Donated from Arcadia, California. A diamond ring. Because the wedding did not happen. So she donated that diamond ring to be put there in the museum of broken relationship. And this is an iron used to iron the dress for the wedding. And then it said, this is the only thing left in our relationship. And this is a former soldier in Yugoslavia, a prosthetic leg. A former soldier gave museum this prosthetic leg during the breakup of Yugoslavia. The soldier said he lost his leg but fell in love. He said the leg lasted longer than the relationship. Oh my God. <laughs> Look at that. That's how bitter he was, right? This is a bad breakup. An axe. She left me for someone she knew for four days. In the next 14 days, every day, I asked one piece of her furniture. I kept the remains as an expression of my inner condition. Come on. That's bitterness. Amen? How many of you could remember this? What's, can tell, somebody tell me what are those? Come on, Richie. Talk back to me. Cassette tape, mixtape. How many of you back in the day, there's no Spotify, there's no Apple Tunes. When you want to record a love song, you have to worry for the DJ and then to record it and mixtape. Look at those mixtapes. And this is, I think, this is really the worst. One of the things, the toaster of vindication. He said here, when I move out and across the country, I took the toaster that show him how are you going to toast anything now. The toaster of vindication. Come on, somebody. One million people will go visit that museum in Croatia just to celebrate the bitterness of people who have breakups. I don't think that's a good way for us to get healed by putting into a museum and memorializing our pain. I ask you, give it to Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. And let, me heal, let Jesus heal your heart. Come on, somebody. And God can heal any broken heart and turn it into a kind heart. The Bible says this, get rid of all rage, anger, harsh words, slander. Everybody say, be kind. Everybody say, be kind. Everybody say, be tenderhearted. I hope you fix this mic. I'm getting bitter now. <laughs> Nelson Mandela should be a person who did a lot of vengeance and hatred and anger because of racism. And listen to what Nelson Mandela said. As I walk out the door toward my freedom, I knew that if I did not leave all the anger, hatred, all bitterness behind, I would still be in prison. Don't be like this dude on the next slide.
Don't be like this dude in the next life. Let me tell you about Convoy of Hope. A lot of you don't know the story of Convoy of Hope. This is the largest faith human organization. I like what they said. We're not the Red Cross, but we are the one telling people to the real cross. I like that. Amen. The kindness that they're sending. Imagine Convoy of Hope is feeding 500,000 kids every day. Can we give a clap of praise for that? Amen. 500,000 kids all over the world, and we're partners with them. This is the picture of Hal Donaldson and the wife, Dory. That's, the, that's the how we start. Very tender guy, very humble, very sweet. But if you, you will hear his story, it's amazing. It's only God could transform that kind of man. So here's the family picture. That's Pastor Donaldson together with the three boys and three girls. Sunday afternoon. The pastor and the wife are on the way to a church gathering, a meeting. Pastor Donaldson forgot something and made a U-turn going back to the home. There's this drunk driver driving like 80 miles per hour in a 30 miles or so, and hit the pickup truck of Do Pastor Donaldson. And Pastor Donaldson dead on the spot and the wife invalid for life. Imagine the police came to their house and telling them the story, your dad is dead, hit by a drunk driver, and your mom will be invalid. And the police gathered the, the neighbors, and this is what the police said, is there anyone from among you who would like to shelter the Donaldson boys and girls? Because if not, we will bring them to the social welfare because they have no more parents to take care of them. And for minutes, no one is responding until one couple raised their hands, we'll take the Donaldson, we'll take them, the Davis family. They're not millionaires, they're not well-to-do. In fact, they're living in a mobile home. Imagine two families Ten people living in a small trailer. Hal Donaldson was saying, we thought the Davis would just keep us for one week, and then for years, they treated us as their own kids. But because of that, Dal, Hal Donaldson became an atheist at the age of 12. This is what he said, how can a loving God allow a drunk driver kill my dad and my mom invalid for life. How can a loving God allow that to happen? He was mad at the world. But the family that sheltered them are born again believers, Christians, taking them to church, buying them clothes at Goodwill, also known as G-Dub, <laughs> Salvation Army, Hal Donaldson was saying, we are going to school with holes in our jeans. Before it became famous, where you use, you know, because now it's famous, right? The trend, there's a holes in their jeans. Before there are holes in their jeans because there's, they have only one pair of jeans. It's mad at the world. And one day, he was sitting outside of the mobile home. Mr. Davis sat beside Hal Donaldson and he said these powerful words. Don't allow the tragedy of your youth to become a lifelong excuse because where you start in life doesn't have to dictate where you will end. Wow, that's powerful. It's like where you are is not who you are because who you are is greater than where you are. I said, Hal, you have a choice to make. Are you going to be mad at the world, mad at God because of this tragedy for the rest of your life? Or you could change the narrative of your story that where you start is not where you will end. So study, eventually became a believer and graduated, became a ghost writer. You know all those people, they have a ghost writer to write for them. So he was invited to go to Calcutta, India to write a book for Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa is her hero. 
when it comes to kindness. So when she was interviewing Mother Teresa, Mother Teresa asked him, young man, what are you doing to help the poor? And Hal Donaldson don't want to sell a lie in, in Mother Teresa, right? So he said, I'm not doing anything. I'm poor. So they should help me. And Mother Teresa said, you cannot help everybody, but you could help somebody. You cannot do everything, but you could do something. She had a change of heart, went back to Sacramento, California, bought a used junk uh, old pickup truck. And every weekend, they would buy bags of groceries, and they would go to the neighborhood and give it away in Oakland. And you know what happened? That's how Convoy of Hope started from a piece of bag of grocery now to this truck. And Donaldson is saying, every time I see that Convoy of Hope truck leaving Missouri and going all over the world, delivering goods, delivering grocery, I'm telling the devil, this is what God did. What the enemy meant for evil, God turned it for good. Come on, somebody. What the enemy meant for evil, God turned that pickup truck into a Convoy of Hope truck. But the point I'm trying to say, instead of being bitter with the world, he became tender-hearted because of Jesus. And another thing I want you to see, the stage of your life right now. Remember when God gave you rest. You know, after Mara, I want you to see something here that's a revelation. I want you to speak this over you. Everybody reads together. They left Mara and went to Elim, where there were 12 springs and... Everybody say, they left Mara. Everybody say, they left bitterness and went into blessing. Elim is blessing. Before you could really go to a place of blessing, you need to set free yourself from bitterness. Come on, somebody, amen. Amen, somebody. Amen, church. I'm, I'm speaking this for you. It's for your own healing. When you leave that bitter spirit, get out of your heart, get out of your mind. I'm telling you, there is a 12 spring. Come on, somebody. There are some 70 palm trees that's waiting for you. It's a place of blessing. Come on, somebody. But you need to leave Mara. You need to leave Mara before you could go to Elim. And then they rested. Some of you are going on vacation this summer, going to go on camping. This is a perfect campsite, right? 12 spring. 70 palm trees, not be too hot. So I want you to know when you travel this month, this summer, you could you take, go, go stroll down the memory lane when you're camping, you're vacationing. Remember where, how God gave you rest. How God gave you rest and restoration and favor. And then let's continue. The next stop or stage that they went is everybody read this together. Remember when God provided for you. Has God been a good provider for His children? Come on, talk back to me, Charisma. I just want to hear you. Come on, somebody. Has God provided for us during COVID? Come on, somebody. And God will provide for us until we die. Amen, somebody. God will take care of us. Amen. Now, after Mara. They went to Repidim, the next stage. I want you to see this. They camped at Repidim. There was no water. In Mara, there was uh, water but not drinkable, bitter. But now here is worse. Dry out. Zero. Nothing. Nada. That's why they complained. They quarreled with Moses. Give us water to drink. Moses replied, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to test? Have you been to a place in your life when you have nothing? Almost homeless? No job, no money? But God bless you and provided for you? Come on, somebody. And now you're sitting here enjoying the favor of the Lord. Come on, church. Remember those days when God provided for you. And this is what God told Moses. I will stand before you, the rock, at Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out and for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders. Imagine that. God told Moses, strike the rock, and the water came out. And they drank water. 
provision out of nowhere, out of the rock. So when you are in need, don't quit, don't give up. Just look up to God, amen? Now, I want to tell you some stories so that you will be amazed at the grace and favor of God upon this church. If you call this your home church now, Charisma. How many of you have been at Charisma at the warehouse? Wave. Would you just look around? Look around. Very few, less than 10, 20 people. Those are like one of those dark moments in our church history. 2008 happened. Crash. Real estate collapse. People lost their job, lost their investment. People living out of Washington. And probably left to the church at less than 50 people. Disgruntled. Going through hard times. And then, to make the matter worse, we, 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 we rent a building $10,000 a month for three months. We're not able to pay the rent. So that's 30000 backlog. And they're suing. Not, they cannot sue the church. They're suing the pastor. That's why I was, those times I, was, I could hardly sleep. I was doing a wedding in Las Vegas. The, 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 the landlord will call me. Hey, you have to pay this. Have you paid it? And then, okay, let's do something. Let's redo the deal. Because we're on the last year of the contract. Why didn't you extend the lease for another three years and then we will give you a discount instead of 10000 8000 But 10000 you can't even pay for it. So I said, I don't want to make decisions. I have to consult the board. Then we have a prayer and fasting. 21 days of prayer and fasting. The Lord spoke to me. Not audibly, but in my heart. The Holy Spirit spoke, don't sign the lease. That's it. Don't sign the lease. So I stood before the people after 21 days of prayer and fasting. I think the Lord spoke to me about our future. He said, don't sign the lease. So the people started complaining. If you don't sign the lease, where are we going to have our service? What's going to happen to this building that we, we renovated? I don't know, but God said, don't sign the lease. When the Lord spoke to me, that is like February, March, April, this building, this church building closed down. It means there's a church here, they dissolved, dissolved out of business. And I was in a meeting and I heard that this building closed down. I, told, I called my wife. I asked Sharon, you know the Timber Ridge Community Church where we used to rent now is out of business? And you know, my wife told me, James, be bold. Tell our leaders, we need that place. We could rent it. How many of you, most of the time, the voice of the Holy Spirit is like the voice of your wife? I don't know, Filipino. You know, Filipinos. We just want to be in the room and sit in one corner, right? And pretend we're harmless. <laughs> so I became bold. I went across the room and said, Dr. Les, welcome. I heard that that building is closed down. I have trouble in the church. We cannot pay our rent in the warehouse. Is it possible if we rent this building? He smiled at me. He said, why don't we meet with Dr. Dondros and Dave Cole at Panera Bread? That's why Panera Bread for me is a holy ground. <laughs> Made at Panera Bread. And they said, you know, James, we are praying. I think this building is perfect for charisma. We're going to sell it to you at a bargain price for $700,000. Do you think you could raise $70,000 in three months? You know what I said? Yes! <laughs> then I came back to church. I think the Lord has an answer for our prayer. The reason why He doesn't want us to renew the lease because God wants us to be owners. Come on, somebody. Not renter. God wants us to have our own house for worship. But we need to raise $70,000. And then the spirit of faith came. People started selling jewelries. People started selling cars. One realtor, her first commission, gave it all to the church as a first fruit. To make the long story short, people sacrificed, rallied together in a month of three months. We raised 70000 for the down payment and $30,000 for the backlog. We left the building and we owed them nothing. Come on, somebody. And we are here celebrating now for 12 years. Come on, somebody. Why am I telling you those stories? Church, remember how the Lord has provided. 
Last Sunday at the warehouse, I said, let's bring all the balloons. This is our last service in this building. Write your prayer requests. Write your dreams, your hopes. We're going to let it fly. Let us send it up to the sky. And this is our new beginning for Charisma. And our first service here was Labor Day. And that's my dad in front of the sign. And that's Roberto. When we were in the warehouse, Roberto prophesied to me. He said, Pastor, one of these days you'll be preaching in the four corners of the world. Four corners of the world. We couldn't even get out of this warehouse. But thank God I believe him. I see myself preaching in Turkey, preaching in Israel, preaching in Italy. Come on, somebody. Preaching in places that I've never dreamed of. This God is so good. And then it look and, and then it reminded me our first service here was a luau. Our last anniversary is another luau. Let's give it up for Jesus. Come on, somebody. Why am I showing you pictures like that? To stir up your faith. That in every stage of your life, whether in the warehouse, whether in the downtime, whether in the market crash, whether you're being sued or what, God is there and He will never leave you nor forsake you. God is faithful. And now we're here. How are we going to touch this community? They're going to listen to an Asian yelling, American shouting pastor. We have, don't have money. We gave $100,000 already. A bank is empty. We have extra money. So why don't we buy some backpacks? All we could afford is 50 backpacks. That's why don't despise small beginnings for the Lord rejoices to see the work began. Ten years ago, we started giving away 50 backpacks. And this year, we're going to give away 2,000 backpacks with school supplies. Come on, somebody. Where do we get all the money for that? Through your tithes and our offering because of your generosity and your part. And this is what happened to me, Charisma. The more we begin loving the poor, giving to the mission, serving the community, the more the Lord bless our this church. Amen, somebody. And I want to prophesy this to you in Deuteronomy. Pass forward, Deuteronomy 15.10. Give freely. Come on, read this with me, Charisma. Give freely and generously. Don't have a stingy heart. The way you handle matters like this, everyone had triggers God. Everyone say triggers God. You know what will move the hand of God to your favor? Generosity. If you have an open hand, God will have an open hand. And how many of you know God's hand is bigger than your hand? When you give freely and generously, the way you handle that, that's what God says, it will trigger God. What, God will, what, what would God do? Listen to this. God's blessing in everything you do. Do you want everything that you do to be blessed by the Lord? Come on, somebody. And all your work and your venture. Come on, your business. Come on, somebody. Amen. That's why it is irresistible for God to bless a generous church. You know one thing that you, I can promise you that you will never see me do? I will never use social media to solicit money for the Lord, for the church. You never see me setting up GoFundMe page for backpack giveaway. We just preach the gospel and ask God for partnership and people give. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. This year, we're going to do something we've never done before. You know how much is 2,000 backpacks with good supplies? $20,000. Last year was 1,000, 10,000. Now, they'll double it. So, where are you going to get the money for that? Goes. When I came back from Europe, we got a letter in the mail. How many of sometimes you don't want to open the mail? Because especially if there's a lot of bills, Right? Right? You just want to let the mail pass over. <laughs> but you need to pass through, so open the mail. I want to read you a letter. Charisma Christian Center, on behalf of this foundation, we are pleased to enclose a check in the amount 
of 11,335 and 5 cents. Come on, can we give Jesus a clap of praise for that? These funds of 11,336.05 cents is from Sandy L. Palmer Estate. I don't even know who this Sandy Palmer is. This gift is the result of your good stewardship in ministry. And we want to commit this to your ministry. We don't even know this person. Sandy Palmer, wherever you are, in behalf of Charisma, thank you. She's in heaven. She died, but left her state to churches. And I don't know how our name came up in that foundation in Missouri. Not even in Washington. What I'm trying to say to you, church, if you are faithful in doing what God has called you to do, God is your source. Come on, somebody. God is faithful. Come on, somebody. God will see to it. The promise of God and my God will supply all your needs according to his what you know there's a big difference between according to and out to no there's a big difference of that if i see jeff bezos in bellevue one of the richest billionaires in the world and he handed me a hundred dollar bill is that according to his riches or out of his riches out of one hundred dollar bill is nothing to him if he gave me one million dollars that is according to his riches can i just tell you this God is richer than Jeff Bezos. Come on, somebody. God is our source. Imagine that all of a sudden, somebody from Missouri don't know our church gave $11,000, the same amount that we needed for extra for our backpack giveaway. Give it all to Jesus. Come on, give it all to Jesus, Lord. Give it all. We don't solicit on Facebook. We don't set up going and be paid. We just trust the Lord. Amen. Because it is irresistible for God to bless a generous church. I want to take it to you home personal. It is irresistible for God to bless a generous person. Are you a generous person? It is irresistible for God to bless you. Then after that, I want you to look at this. Remember when you experience loss. This journey is lots of ups and downs. After they have been provided for, the next stop, look at this next stage. They went to, uh, they didn't see it happen. At the Lord's command, Aaron the priest went up to Mount Hor, where he died. Aaron was 123 years old when he died on Mount Hor. Moses did not see that coming. Moses is Aaron, their body, body. In fact, whenever Moses is, it's like he's an encourager. He's a spokesperson. It's like you have your side and best friend pass away, just went to the mountain, and then the Lord took him away. Remember, God, when you lost something. You know, Father's Day was a little bit tough for me because this Father's Day became so vivid to me that I have no father. Because my father passed away two years ago. He was like a mentor to me that I always ask for his affirmation. Every time I preach, James, great word. He will always be cheering me on. Then that Father's Day, I was so lonely. And the Lord just reminded me, don't seek your affirmation from any human being, but seek your affirmation from your heavenly Father. Amen. What have you lost? A husband, a job, a family. Loss is something that we have to go through. But I want to speak this over you today. What is loss is painful. 
What is left is powerful. What's left, you're still alive. God has a mission for you. Amen. And last but not the least, remember when you are afraid. I like this. It doesn't mean when you follow Jesus, you will not be afraid anymore. Look at these words of God to Moses. The Canaanite king of Arad who lived in the Negev of Canaan heard that Israelites were coming. They're now on the border of the promised land. But there's Canaan. The Canaan are strong people. They're the enemies of Israel. It's just rumor. Oh, we heard the Israelites are coming. And then the leaders of Israelites became afraid because the same people attacked them before and they captured some of the Israelites. I want you to show you in the Bible. When the Canaanite king of Arad who lived in the Negev heard that Israel was coming along the road to Atar, he attacked the Israelites and captured. They lost before to these people. They lost to the Canaanite before. And now they have to defeat the Canaanite in order to possess the promised land. So I'd literally, they're, they're afraid. But I want you to understand. Remember when you are afraid that God is there with you. Here's a verse I want you to claim and say to yourself. I speak this over me when the anxiety level is getting up. I'm telling you, there are moments panic is attacking me. Psalm 56, verse 3 and 4. Everybody read this together. One, two, three. When I am afraid, I will trust you. I praise God for His word. I trust God so I am not afraid. What can human beings do to me? Would you please read this again, Charisma? When I am afraid, I will trust you. I praise God for His Word. I trust God so I am not afraid. What can human be? So whenever you are afraid, you trust God and open the Bible. If you go to TikTok, to social media, to Netflix, it will, it will remove a little bit of your fear, but the fear is still there. For, go to the Word of God. I praise God for His Word. Amen, somebody. Don't you tell me God is not talking to you when you're not reading the Bible. The Bible is, you need to open it and God will speak to you. Amen. When I am afraid, I'll trust you. Then open the Scripture. I praise God for His Word. And then I trust God. And then, then God gave Moses a word. Listen to what God gave to Moses. On the plains of Moab by the Jordan River across the Jericho, the Lord spoke to Moses. Everybody say this, read this together. Speak to the Israelites and tell them when you cross what? The Jordan River into the Canaan. The, did Jesus say if you cross or when? It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Come on, somebody. When God said, you're going to finish, when, believe it, the timing is just up to God, but you're going to make it to the promise. And amen, somebody. It's a matter of when. And so Moses said, God made the promise to me. And I'm speaking to you, that land is ours. That's our promised land. When we cross over to the promised land. And true enough, they went to the promised land. The first fight, Jericho. How did God defeat the armies in Jericho? They just marched around for seven times. And God broke down the walls of Jericho and they possessed the promised land without even a fight. Give Jesus the best clap of praise in the house. Come on, somebody. So church, are you afraid of tomorrow? What stage are you in right now in your life? Are you in the stage of you need deliverance, you have a struggle, that you know that you know you need help from God? Are you in the stage of your life you need provision, that your job is not cutting out for you? You need an extra, you need a promote, things like that. Maybe some of you, you're in the stage right now, you have a bitter spirit, anger, resentment toward your bitter half, that needs to be get, get out of that system. Or maybe you're in the states where you're a little bit afraid on what's next. 
whatever it is, I want to say this to all of you. God is the God of all season. God is the God of all season. Whether you're in the mountain, God is there. Whether you're in the valley, God is there. Now that here we are in this beautiful building of us, God is there. But God was with us even in the warehouse. Come on, somebody. God was with us and He is faithful. I want us to stand up on our feet today. I want to ask our worship team if all of them could help me out. Come up here. We're going to speak Jesus through this song. And would you allow me, Charisma, to pray for you today? I sense I have this anointing right now, okay, delivering this message. I'd like to ask Pastor Bill, my wife, Tita, Tita Lulu, Kuya Homer, would you help me out? Pastor Arya, or any pastors here, would you come up here? And I want you to come to one of these people. Come on, and tell them what stage in your journey you are in right now. Maybe some of you are in the stage of loss, death, loss of a loved one, loss of a relationship. Hallelujah. Maybe some of you are in the stage of provision. I need a miracle in my finances. Tell them, we're going to pray. Maybe some of you are in the stage of need deliverance. God, pastor, I, I'm, 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 I'm held bondage by this. Substance abuse or whatever it is, or anger or hatred. I need to get rid, set free from this. Hallelujah. Would you come forward as the worship team will say, allow us to pray over you today. Let this be the day of freedom and deliverance today. Come forward if you need prayer. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power your name is healing, your name is love. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like the fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over fear and all anxiety To every soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus Your name is power And we declare it now Your name is healing Your name Darkness of 
over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus
of the person next to you. We are one family here across the aisle. Don't be shy. Those of you are watching online, if you have someone watching with you, would you ask them to come out? Because the place of agreement is the place of miracle. Where two or three agreed anything, touching anything here on earth, it will be touching heaven. I want us to hold the hand of the person next to you. And I want to make a prophecy. We're going to put this prophecy on the screen and I want to read it to you. This was given to me by the Lord before COVID happened. When we don't know what will be the end of this COVID. There's fear and there's rumors. There's like panic. God gave this word to me and we're out of COVID now, and I believe that God wants us to be reassured. No matter where you are, no matter how bad it gets, no matter how worse your situation, and no matter what people are plotting against you, I, your God, will manifest my presence and power among my people. Lord, I thank you for giving me this honor and privilege to be one of the pastors of Charisma. We are on different stages of our journey. Some are in the stage of God, we need a miracle in our finances, you provide. Some are in the stage of God, heal us from this brokenness. Some are in the stage of lost God, be my father, be my husband, be my partner. Maybe some of us are in the states of needing deliverance across the Red Sea. Whatever stage you are in, God is holding you by the hand. And God knows where you are. God knows your name. You're not just a number to Him. You are his son and his daughter. And he's holding you by the hand. And he's just asking you to trust him. When he moves, you move. When he stops, you stop. You just trust him. God, I thank you that you are the God of all season. We can never thank you enough for how you delivered us. At the, at the break of bankruptcy, Lord God, and here, Lord God, serving this community, flourishing and serving, Lord, and loving these people, this community. We can never thank you enough for how you spared us and how you have sustained us and how you have blessed us, oh God. Lord, I pray for these people that I dearly love. I pray, God, you are Jehovah Jireh. I pray that you will bless their business. I pray that you will bless opportunity. I pray that you will favor them. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for unprecedented favor of blessing to happen. I pray for unexpected checks to arrive. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray for those people who are struggling, oh God, with whatever, Lord God, is going through. Bitterness, addiction, abuse, oh God, or panic attack or worry we rebuke this in jesus name and we replace it with hope we replace it with joy we replace it oh god with assurance that you will never leave them nor forsake them oh god and god i pray for those people who need to cross over the the, the salvation mode if you have not given your life to jesus yet you heard a lot of stories you've been to this church so many times but deep inside you need to have a personal encounter with jesus today is the day just everybody say yes to Jesus. 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 No church, that is all it takes. I said yes to Jesus. And God took care of the rest. 
And Jesus will lead you. Jesus will guide you. Jesus will take care of you. Jesus will be your safe. Jesus will be your provider. And God, I pray. Thank you, Lord, as we look forward to August 5, 2,000 backpacks with school supplies. As we look forward, Lord, to Convey of Hope Track arriving here, giving kindness and favor and groceries to our neighbors, oh God. We are believing that each backpack represents a family. Each grocery represents a person. I pray that through that love gifts, oh God, they will feel the love of God. They will feel that God is on their side. That will bring hope to them in Jesus' name, oh God. And I prophesy over you today in the mighty name of Jesus, the best days of your life is still ahead of you. The best days of your marriage is still ahead of you. The best days of your family is still ahead of you. What is lost is painful, but what is left is powerful. You are powerful because you are still alive. And God has a mission for you. And God is not done with you. What He did in the past, He will do it again. He will do it again. He will do it again. If He is faithful before, He is faithful today. He will be faithful tomorrow. God is always on our side. And I ask you right now, Holy Spirit, to those people who are in the states of fear, what's next? Fear, afraid. Holy Spirit, I will ask you to embrace them right now. Embrace them with your holy hug, Holy Spirit. Because there is no fear in love. Perfect love cast away fear. Let their hearts be so filled with the love of God and let fear vanish in Jesus' name. And all of God's people say today, Amen. Let's give the Lord a mighty clap of praise today. Amen.